Okay, so in our final example of co-ratios, uh, it looks quite complicated, but it's actually not that bad. If tan of 43 degrees is equal to n, write the following in terms of n. So they give us that tan 43 is equal to n. And all you need to know is that tan of any angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So if I have opposite over adjacent is equal to n, I can assume the opposite is n and the adjacent is 1. So, here's my opposite. The angle is 43. It doesn't really matter what the angle is. It could have been anything. Okay, Opposite is n and adjacent is 1. What will the hypotenuse be? Well, if we have two side lengths, we can find the hypotenuse using Pythagoras. So, let's do that. Hypotenuse, let's call it r. We know that r is equal to the square root of n squared plus 1 squared. n squared plus 1 squared. And there we go. That is what this length is. n squared plus 1 squared. And because we know that, if we can write these angles or these ratios in terms of um, 43, then we can just use this triangle. So let's go about doing that. So how can we use rewrite the angle negative 317 uh, involving 43 degrees? Let's see. We can say that cos of negative 360 plus 43 there we go. So again, remember, we are going to try and use negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, or negative 360, or the positive angles being, change color again, 90, 180, 270, or 360 degrees. Okay. And we have negative 317, meaning we started here, go all the way past negative 270 into the first quadrant, what is known as the first quadrant. And if we finish our cast diagram, we see that whatever the output is, it must be positive because all of the ratios in that first quadrant is positive. So we can express it as negative 360 plus, because we are going back in the positive direction, plus 43, and you can taste this, negative 360 plus 43 is indeed negative 317, so that this one simplifies to be cos of 43 degrees. Now with cos of 43 degrees, it's really simple, cos is opposite, sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so cos is simply 1 over the square root of n squared minus 1. And that's it. Okay, so in the last one we have cos of negative 133. And in which quadrant is that? Well, um, that would take us to negative 90, negative 180. So it's not really at negative 180. It's somewhere in here in the second quadrant. Uh, third quadrant. Now, if I am in the third quadrant, I can either write it as negative 180 plus or as negative 90 minus. Now, I want 43. I want to use 43. So, what do we get if we take negative 180 plus 43? would give me negative 137. That does not work. We need 133. So how about negative 90 minus 43? That seems to be working. That is indeed negative 133. So we can go and rewrite this angle in here as cos of negative 90 degrees minus 43. So all we did was simply rewriting this angle in a different way. And now we see, aha, uh -huh, this is this refers to an angle made with the y-axis. So we need to change cos into sine to make to change 
uh, x into y and then we can get rid of the negative 90 degrees minus if we take into account the fact that we are in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant cos is posi uh, negative because tan is the only one that's positive. So we must have a negative. Cos changes into sine of 43 degrees. And that's not so bad. Sine of 43 degrees we can easily go and calculate. Just remember there's a negative. Negative sine is opposite over hypotenuse n over the square root of n squared plus 1. And I see I made a mistake here. That should be a plus. n squared plus 1. 